Hello and welcome to an India Today special broadcast that comes to you from Tawang in Arunachal Pradesh. I'm Gaurav Savant. Over the course of the next half hour, we tell you about India's aggressive defense on land, at sea and in the air against expansionist forces in the region. <laughs> From an aggressive stance at the LAC at Yangtze Tawang to dominating the skies in the east with a massive air exercise. to a long-range strategic missile test in the Indian Ocean. On land, at sea and in the air. India's aggressive defense is our top focus on India first. After the setback China suffered in Yangtze, China, we are told, has also started building up in a big way in Bumla. Yangtze, according to locals here in Tawang, has a spiritual significance. In fact, there are about 108 water bodies here, waterfalls and lakes that have tremendous emotional and spiritual significance and attachment. People here in Tawang and people in Tibet, uh, in China-occupied Tibet, they both uh, feel very close uh, to this region and that is why China is well and truly trying to at least be in control of the strategic heights. It failed in Yangtze. It's trying to build up, of course, on its side in Bumla. But once again, the army is prepared. So are the Air Force and the Navy. Days after the Dragon's failed incursion in Tawang's Yangtze region, the Chinese army is beefing up its presence in other regions. Sources tell India today, after the Indian army foiled the PLA's attempt in Yangtze, China has deployed its army in the Bumla sector. India, however, enjoys the upper hand here. At an altitude of about 14,000 feet, the India Today team is currently in the Tawang Bumla sector. We are on the Tawang Bumla axis. Um, the army is deployed here in numbers. After the Chinese army failed in Yangtze, the information was that uh, the Chinese are building up in large numbers in Bumla. Again, high altitude, again with a history of 1962. But Lessons learned, the army is deployed in numbers. Along the way, there are some, uh, some gun positions, some um, 155mm howitzer positions, but we are not showing those positions to you uh, as they would compromise security. There are bunkers of the forces, uh, both of this time, and uh, you know some of the older bunkers of the 1962 war can also be seen uh, around here. The army is deployed here in good numbers uh, and there is some troop movement that is also taking place. Simultaneously, there is an air exercise that is on. The Eastern Air Command uh, is carrying out its command level exercise. The waterfalls and lakes along the Yangtze Tawang, Bumla axis are a major reason behind China's incursions. The Tibetan population living here considers the water from these lakes and waterfalls holy. At an altitude of about 12,500 feet, the India Today team is currently at the Sangatsar Lake. This is not very far from the line of actual control. In fact, the waterfalls and holy lakes in this region are one of the principal reasons for the friction between India and China. Now, lakes and waterfalls around Yangtze. Now, uh, Tibetans on the other side of the line of actual control also consider this extremely holy. Uh, the Tibetans on this side, they visit these holy waters um, and, and they pray there. Now, India dominates these heights. Uh, if you look around, look at those jag peaks right behind me. Uh, these altitudes are anything between 
12,500 go all the way up to 17,500 and this is where the army is now deployed in big numbers. India today is the only channel to come uh, so close to the line of actual control near Bumla in Tawang on the axis uh, to Yangtze. Now these are three different axes where we are reporting from ground zero to be able to get you an assessment of the deployment on the Indian side and the preparedness on the Indian side. That preparation is whether it's the infrastructure development, um, building civilian areas also. In fact, at the Sangat Sar Lake, uh, while you see a lot of military deployment, you also see civilian vehicles here because the effort of the administration here is to ensure that civilians, whether in Arunachal Pradesh or from the rest of the country, also are stakeholders in protecting India's territorial integrity. And that is why the Sangat Sar project is extremely significant. Religion, strategy, military and location. Multiple reasons why China is desperate to come into this area. Equally important why India is very keen to hold on to this territory. And this leads to friction. There are multiple. There are about eight friction points in this area. Yangtze perhaps the most sensitive of those eight. But even now there is massive deployment. That's what sources are telling India today. The local Tibetan leaders in Tawang believe that China desperately wants to change status quo along the LAC in order to control these lakes and waterfalls. Multiple waterfalls and 108 lakes in this part of Tawang form the bone of contention between China and India around the line of actual control in this region. Now these waterfalls and lakes are considered holy by the people of Tibet. They are on the Indian side of the line of actual control. People from Tibet want this holy water. China has desperately tried to control the 108 lakes and the waterfalls. It is said that one of the spiritual leaders of Tibet had sprinkled his prayer beads and wherever those prayer beads fell, 108 lakes were formed in those areas. The people here worship this water. China has repeatedly tried to take control of the access to these lakes. China has repeatedly failed like it did at Yangtze. Sources tell India today the Indian Army has done a major deployment in the Tawang sector. With both the countries raising their presence, a de-escalation won't be easy. With Gaurav Savant in Tawang, Bureau Report, India Today. Tension is not only high in Arunachal Pradesh, but China is also building up in the Doklam region. Remember, close to the tri-junction between India, Bhutan and China? Well, that is where China is building up once again. There was a standoff there in 2017 that lasted 73 days and ended when China decided to move back. It may have retreated. Maybe that was a tactical retreat. But subsequently, China started a massive build-up of infrastructure in that region, whether it's tracks or roads or buildings or even additional troop deployment. Clearly not to India's liking, but India has also intensified its presence in that region to ensure that China does not succeed in any of its nefarious designs. <laughs> Doklam, the site of 73 days standoff between India and China in 2017. Five years on and at the back of escalated tensions in Arunachal Pradesh, the spotlight has shifted back to the India-Tibet-Bhutan tri-junction. Could Doklam be the next flashpoint? The Chinese are still holding on to territory in Bhutan, which is not to India's liking. Intelligence reports suggest that Chinese have beefed up infrastructure across the borders. About 9 kilometers from the India-Bhutan-China tri-junction, China continues to expand its presence in the Bhutanese territory. Pangda village, set up in 2020, has witnessed expansion in the south. 
A set of new buildings along with a bridge over the Torsa water body can be seen in the recent satellite imagery analyzed by India Today. They also show more ground clearance further south of Dokla. In the cluster of new villages approximately 20 kilometers from the border in the north called Langmarpo being set up by China in the Bhutanese territory, rapid construction continues. These areas include Saiburu, Kaitangsha and Quill. The over two month standoff that was resolved in August 2017 was triggered after Indian troops stopped the Chinese road construction in Dokla. While the Chinese are constantly increasing their firepower, the Indian Army is making efforts to match up. The Indian Army has also been enhancing its infrastructure and pushing its deployment forward. With the two sides just meters away and India concerned about China's new construction, including a critical bridge, tension is simmering and could lead to another standoff. With Ankit Kumar and Abhishek Bhalla, Bureau Report, India Today. There is rising anger almost across the country at Chinese aggression along the line of actual control. Whether it was Doklam in 2017 or Galwan in 2020 or Yangtze in 2022. However, financial ties, trade ties between the two countries continue almost unfettered. In fact, it's only increased and the trade deficit stands at $73 billion in financial year 2022. It was $63 billion in the financial year 2018. And this is where Indians need to learn to put India first. Anger surges in India once again over trade with China. This after troops of the two Asian giants traded blows once again. The wave against Chinese products that built up after the Galwan clash has begun to resurface again after the latest flare-up along the mountain border in Arunachal Pradesh. प्लास्टिक है, फर्नीचर है, खिलौने हैं, जो भारत देश में पहले से ही बनते हैं, आप उनका आयात बंद कीजिए, फिर धीरे-धीरे फेस बाय एक दीर्घकालिक योजना बनाके चीन के सामान का बेइज्जत करना पड़ेगा। The anti-China backlash has begun to crest in political circles. AAP chief Arvind Kejriwal has pushed the idea of an economic warfare against Beijing. His close lieutenant Sanjay Singh has sought to corner the Modi government over trade ties with China. Modi ji ko samne aakar is desh ki janata ko batana padega aapki kya majburi hai. Kaun kaun sa vyapar aap karte hain? Kaun kaun sa vyapar aapke mitra punji pati Chin ke saath karte hain? Kya dabao hai? Aap punji patiyon ke chakkar mein Bharat ki sima ki suraksha ke saath samjhota karenge? Aap nahi bolenge? India and China have long been critical trade partners. The total merchandise trade jumped 34% to around $116 billion in the 12 months to March 2022. But Chinese imports to India outpace exports. The trade deficit, which stands at around $51 billion in the first seven months of the current fiscal alone, has begun to echo through political circles. Trade imbalance is so much that China has a trade imbalance and we are only a TikTok bank. Two years ago, India banned dozens of mobile apps, including the Chinese ones like TikTok. But the ballooning trade between the two powers suggests the economic response to their border tensions has remained measured. A full-on trade war must not be in anybody's interest. We are a report, India Today. The K-4 is a nuclear-capable submarine-launched intermediate-range ballistic missile with a range of of 3,500 kilometers. Now, the K-4 on INS Arihant 
India's nuclear submarine, nuclear powered submarine with a nuclear capable missile. Imagine the deterrence power it gives the Indian Navy. Let's now tell you more about the Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO, produced K-4 missile. The American Trident and the Russian Bulawa. Two of the world's most destructive missiles. Both weapons of mass destruction. Last resort options. Launched from lurking nuclear powered ballistic missile submarines or SSBNs. We've just given you a comprehensive overview of India's own SSBNs. And now we tell you about their current and future weapons. India's sole current SSBN, INS Arihant, carries four of this missile you see here, the K-4. The missile, a derivative of the Agni-3, is nuclear-tipped and operational with India's nuclear deterrent. Sporting a range of over 3,500 kilometers, an extended range version called the K-5, a derivative of the Agni-5, is also understood to be under development and could be tested soon. The second is the K-15, officially designated B-5, commonly referred to as Sagrika. The nuclear-capable K-15 is also active on INS Arihant and sports a range of 750 kilometers. But the true deterrent, an intercontinental range ballistic missile for India's SSBN fleet is taking early steps towards development testing. In 2017, the DRDO flagged off its K-6 SLBM project, a missile with an ICBM-like range of 6,000 kilometers. This three-stage solid fuel missile is said to be completely different from the K-4 and K-5. It will be ready in a few years from now. These new missiles, over 12 meters tall and over 2 meters in diameter, will carry a three-ton warhead. The K-6 will ensure that the future Indian SSBN's bastion area will be within the Bay of Bengal. From where, it can target all its potential adversaries. So while India's nuclear submarine deterrent is being developed at full speed, its nuclear teeth are in top gear as well. As always, the true strength of such weapons is in India never having to need them. Because should such a situation come to pass, it would mean that the world is already in an apocalyptic war. Let me now get you the other big story of the day in a bid to enhance the firepower of Indian Navy warships. The government has decided to acquire at least 38 additional Brahmos supersonic cruise missiles extended range. Now these missiles of extended range would be able to hit any target accurately between 450 to even 500 kilometers away and it's a supersonic cruise missile almost impossible to intercept on earlier episodes of battle cry we've shown you how india's formidable brahmos supersonic cruise missile has been proven out at a lethal extended range, giving it a 50% boost in targeting reach from 300 kilometers to 450 kilometers. And with the testing done, the Indian military is all set to place orders for the extended range anti ship and land attack weapon. Seeking to strengthen firepower of its warships. 
the Indian Navy is looking to equip its warships with 38 new BrahMos ER missiles. A 17,000 crore proposal to acquire 38 extended range BrahMos supersonic cruise missile is with the Defence Ministry and is expected to be approved soon. Government sources tell India Today. In October, battle cries scooped the first images of a crucial proving test of the BrahMos extended range. The BrahMos is seeing a great deal of limelight this year, including on the 49th Vijay Divas, where a BrahMos was fired during an exercise from an Indian Navy ship. The missile is without doubt one of India's most important weapons. But let's take you back a few weeks to where things really began to turn. Five, four, three, two, one, nine, nine. The unmistakable roar of the Brahmo. Screaming into the air. This supersonic cruise missile is the fastest weapon in India and one of the fastest in the world. But this unpublicized test from September 30, a video from which you're seeing for the first time here on India Today, wasn't just another test of the BrahMos missile. You cannot tell from these dramatic pictures, but the weapon being tested here is a beefed up BrahMos. While the BrahMos has for long been restricted to a 290 km range, this test saw the BrahMos being tested at ranges well in excess of 400 km. Also invisible to the eye are a slew of improvements that make this weapon significantly more stealthy. With this range extension, several more targets come within range of the in Arunachal Pradesh. We will continue to report this big story from Ground Zero.